Okay, so in this video we're checking out the Eshin Civitar HD. So I never got a chance to review the analog version of this, which came out uh, three months ago, I think, something like that, uh, which is just called the Eshin Civitar. Very similar to this, but it doesn't have any of the DJI stuff. Of course, it's just analog. That was sent to me, uh, but it's somewhere stuck in customs in Canada, I believe, along with, I think, three or four of the drones that were sent to me by various other vendors. I you're wondering like why haven't you reviewed xyz drone it's probably stuck in customs in canada for some reason i don't know why because you can see it tracked and shipping and it goes to, uh, from china and it lands in uh, canada and then just no updates after that just nothing so that's where it is that's why i haven't seen that video so that but now i'm getting a chance to review the um, dji version so unfortunately, probably I'm not gonna. As far as I know, every, anything I've, I've lost in that's been lost in Canada, I've never gotten. So I'm just gonna uh, basically wipe that away and just figure it's never gonna get reviewed. So um, if you're worrying about the analog version, that's why, and you're probably never gonna see that. But it's gonna fly really similar to this anyway. It's just that it's gonna be a little bit lighter than this one because it doesn't have the the DJI system on here. So like any other the three inch. Cinewhips here like this, a lot of them were very, very similar. So I reviewed a lot of them already. Uh, the Flywoo, I think it's called the Chasers 138, the Bumblebee from iFlight, the Green Hornet from iFlight, uh, Diatone Taycan. They're all kind of built around the same sort of formula. These are not Acura machines or racing machines. They're specifically for capturing 4K or high quality video footage with a GoPro or some sort of other you know, nice 4K camera, and that is kind of the goal of this. And Yishin's, um, you know, they, they had the analog version and they, they took a while to make the, the DJI version. I'm not exactly sure why there was such a long break between the um, two different versions. Um, it may be because they couldn't find the HD parts for or the digital parts, for example, at the time. Usually, in you know, these, these manufacturers, they um, make them all at the same time and they all come out once, but this one is obviously a few months later. So in terms of the specs, you got 1507 motors and let me see if I can get that in camera here. 1507, 2400 KV motors. It also comes in a 4S version as a 3600 KV motor. So this one's a 6S version. And um, this one does come with the five liter gem fan uh, D63 props, which does, I think give it the five blades on this sort of thing does give a little bit more control. I think the older version came with three bladed props and a lot of the other models came with three three bladed props but keep in mind that this gem fan five bladed prop is pretty new and you can always switch out the prop you have for this one if you want a little bit more control i think it's a little bit less efficient though if you're if you're wondering about flight time the stack in here is Yishin branded and um the boards are the red in color and it's kind of hard to see here yeah, it's not going to really come out on camera. So uh, they're red in color, the, e, the the flight controller and the EC, and they remind me of HDLRs, HGLRC parts. And I wouldn't be surprised if they're actually manufactured by HGLRC. I think that's what ECN has been kind of doing there lately. Their strategy is to acquire parts and rebrand them from other manufacturers because, you know, iFlight, HGLRC, Dyton, they all make you know, parts and they're all kind of, I'm pretty sure they all come from the same factory. So it wouldn't be that difficult for them to rebrand it. But I'm pretty sure that the flight controller and the EC here is an HDLRC part. That's what they look like. The boards kind of have that style in terms of like the way the solder pads are and everything. So you have an F7 flight controller. I think it's got like five or six UARTs, um, MPS 6000 gyro. Basically it's, a, it's an F722. It's a fairly new one, it has a barometer as well. So it's uh, basically a fairly modern flight controller for uh, end of 2020. In fact, I think that's uh, probably the latest in terms of latest and greatest right now is the F722 or the F745. And then you got a 40, I'm sorry, 35 amp, four in one ESC. And it's a 32 bit ESC. So it's 35 amps up to uh, 40 amps bursting and they're 32 bit ESC. So the specs on this are pretty nice in terms of all the, the motors, the flight controller, electronics, everything here as well as the, you get the, the DJI uh, full air unit and the DJI camera. Uh, this one here is the Crossfire version. You see in the back, you got the Crossfire antenna with the mount in the back here. And I believe the Crossfire receiver is tucked away right there over there. And so yeah, in terms of, um, you know, specs and everything, nice, all very premium parts. 
frame, pretty typical. Uh, you got a two millimeter uh, unibody top plate. So it's one big piece of carbon, which is also why these models are a little bit more expensive because it's using a really big sheet of carbon and cutting a bunch of holes out. So you have a two millimeter sheet on the top and the bottom plate is also two millimeters. And then you have all of these M2 standoffs here along with the screws. You can see every, everywhere you see here where the two plates are being held together. These are all M2 standoffs. And then you have this foam that goes all the way around this little bumper. So if you're flying it indoors and it's nice and thick, so that carbon is not going to be making any dents in your walls if you want to fly it indoors. That's what the bumper's for. And then you have these uh, plastic ducts here. These aren't 3D printed. They're actually injection molded plastic, but it's a straight duct. And the gap there isn't super tight. You can see there's a you know, probably about a millimeter or so of a gap. So it's not really having any of that duct effect in terms of increasing efficiency, but it's because it's basically a straight wall and you do get a spare one, I think one spare duct in the box as well as a spare set of propellers if you need, if you happen to break any of them in, in the future. So that is, is included in the box as well. You get a, a few other TPU parts here. This camera mount here is basically for these GoPro style mounts like on the Hero 8 here. I just pull these little mounts down off the camera and then screw you know slide this in here and then put the screw in and then the angle is, is adjustable there is also another piece for just basically like a fixed angle flat piece where you can do a battery strap mount for a camera like a session 5 or any other uh, hd camera you can use one of those uh, on the bottom here you can see i have some additional parts for like basically landing feet so they don't are landing on these screws so this is additional TP parts here you know, on all of them. So you're not going to be, when you land, uh, all these screws aren't going to get scratched up if you're landing on like concrete or something like that. So overall, you know, the performance of this is right in line with uh, all the other ones that have the 1507 motors. I think there's other models that have the 1408 motors. So if you're considering getting like ones with the 1507 or the 1408, I would recommend the 1507 over the 1408 and I would recommend getting the five bladed props over three bladed props. That's just my, uh, based on my experience on flying all these, that's the kind of setup I would go for. You know, if you're not sure about, you know, using customer support and all that, you know, there's definitely other models out there. Although right now this is fairly inexpensive for this style here with the air unit. Uh, if you compare this, I think right now without the receiver, because you can, you can obviously just get as plug and play. It's like three, 46 I believe something like that and then the equivalent one from iFlight uh, is like 450 so it's almost a hundred dollars more for almost exactly the same equipment now of course you know that this is at the time of the recording of this video prices fluctuate like crazy and that, that is a flash sale price I don't exactly know how many more days it's going to be on flash sale? I, mean, I think it's only going to be maybe another week or so. I obviously, they go on and off flash sale all the time. So, you, like I said, you got to kind of constantly check prices and see what the latest prices are. But right now, it's fairly inexpensive for the specs you get. And um, it, you know, uh, if you want to compare just the specs alone, motors, electronics, the, the fact you get the DJI air unit, it's a pretty good price right now. Now you have to take into consideration customer support, you know, and what you're going to get from being good compared to um, iFlight or Diatone or one of those other companies, you may feel that they, they're going to be more responsive. And is it worth the extra, you know, $80, $90 for you? That's, you know, obviously a decision it's, you're going to have to make and decide for yourself. But I'm just saying that, you know, in terms of the the quality of the, or the specs in terms of the, what you get, uh, electronic wise, frame, everything is very much in line with all the other manufacturers out there. So, you know, they pretty much just copied what they have out there and basically giving you a little bit lower price. And I think, you know, in terms of customer service, it might not be quite as good. So it's kind of, kind of like the trade off, you know, you're willing to spend a little bit less, you know, and maybe get a little bit less customer service, or do you want to spend a little bit more and get a little bit more customer service? I think that's kind of what the trade off we're looking at here for these type of models. Now, in terms of the uh, pit tune, surprisingly, Yushin did put a pit tune on here and it flies fine. Um, if you're trying to get, you know, just footage from your uh, GoPro 6, 7, 8, or if you're using some sort of uh, real steady or even like hyper smooth that's built into the camera, you're going to get nice smooth footage. And even like if you look at the raw um, HD footage is coming from the air unit, it's nice and smooth coming from this model. So uh, unless you're flying outdoors in a lot of wind, 
it's going to fly pretty well for you and do the job. Now, as I said, I have the 6S version here, so I flew it on this 1050 6S battery. I think I got about five minutes of flight time on this battery, uh, give or take. And, you know, if you get the 4S version, uh, you probably want to go to like a 1550. And I don't know what the flight time is going to be on, on that KV. It's probably going to be a little bit similar, although I think the 1550 might be a little bit heavier. So, you know, again, I don't have that version, so I can't give you, you know, an apples to apples comparison. You know, um, these days, most of the uh, Cinewhips are going for 6S now. I think the 6S 1050 is probably going to be a little bit more efficient in terms of current draw on 2400 KV. So if you're looking for maybe a little bit better flight times and not as much amp draw, um, the 6S might be the way to go. And I think the 6S is actually $20 cheaper right now, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so see if I can't uh, get this weight here. It's going to be hard to show. Okay, great. It's balancing here. And we're coming in at 340, almost 344 grams. And let's throw on the battery. So this is going to be really tricky. Let's try this. Okay, 343.7. And then with the 6S LiPo coming at 541 grams. And then with the Hero 8. And we're coming at 670 grams. Total weight, this is how I flew it. Okay, so I think it's gonna do it for this model. Um, you know, if you really wanna see how this compares to all the other models that I mentioned here, I'll put the link to the Cinewhip playlist down in the description. You can kind of peruse through those videos and check out the other models and see how they fly compared to this one. Obviously, over time, if you go back in history, they, I think they tend to fly worse. And as time progresses, they upgrade to newer versions of Betaflight, uh, enhance the PID tunes, you know, get better equipment, like going from 1408 to 1507 motors, for example going to 6S, going to better props. So as time has progressed, these have flown better and better. So if you go back in the past and look at some of the older videos, they may not fly as good at these as these, but then also keep in mind that the manufacturers have been updating those as well. So I think like the uh, Bumblebee that I reviewed originally was like the version one. I think they're already on version two or three now. So again, you know, they have made progressions in their specs and made tweaks into the you know tune and everything, maybe change the props, et cetera. So they are gonna fly better. So, you know, if you're wondering about that, uh, when you go back and look at some of the older ones, it may not be a true reflection of what you may get if you could, if you happen to buy an older model, they may have updated it. So again, that's not a guarantee, just that that's the kind of trend I'm seeing in terms of what the manufacturers do. So just something to keep in mind, if you're looking at older videos, that's probably what you're going to see.